tonight. Let's celebrate Jesus. I thought you clap. I thought you shout. Come on, our home in church, 412 Live. Help me celebrate the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Make some noise for Jesus tonight. Oh, come on, I can't feel you. Make some noise for Jesus. Come on, come we shout Jesus. Three, two, one, we shout. Jesus. One more time. Three, two, one, we shout. Jesus. It's good to be in the house of God. This is the Empowerment Worship Center, Global Home Prayer Factory. Help me celebrate the gift of God, our globally pastor, Pastor Gideon Down. So can we honor and celebrate the man of God? What a man of God. What a man of God. Come on, we're a house of honor. Help me do it better for the prophet Gideon Down. So, and while you're at it, help me celebrate our senior pastors. And of course, last but not the least, give it up for yourself because you made it to church tonight and online. God bless you so much for connecting with us. want to just pray and set the tone of the service tonight. Can we lift up our hands in prayer? want to thank you, Father, for an awesome day in your house. Thank you that one day in your house is worth a thousand elsewhere. Father, want to celebrate you and praise you that we've heard your word. We've heard your mind in the first three services. We pray that you do another thing yet again tonight. Tell us the voice of the enemy and the voice of the accuser in Jesus' mighty name. And we all said, amen. It's good to be in the house of God. I want to encourage you to lean in, to worship. It's going to be a great, great time. Let's celebrate 412 Live. As we worship. Hallelujah. Generations after generations keep praising you. You know songs you up. Then I
darkness, my God, that is who you are. Let your voice and declare, they make miracle work from the scheme, light in the darkness, hey, that is who you are. One more time, sing way, hey, God, way make miracle work. Mighty, oh. 
Pastor, one more time, our Father, your Father, oh, for the prophet of God. Daddy, we honor and we appreciate you. We love you so, so much. Someone said to me that 6 p.m. service, 4 service, we are the best. Are we the best? Now I can't feel the energy, the energy in the room. Are we the best? Of course we are the best. What a spirited atmosphere. Can we celebrate Jesus for 412 Live, somebody? Come on, come on, come on. Let's do it better for 412 Live incredible time in the presence of God. Kindly turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's good to see you. And just let them know that tonight is all about Jesus. Oh, one more time, say to your neighbor, tonight it's all about Jesus. Of course, every single thing that we do here in our church is all about Jesus. If you join us online, welcome to our church empowerment Worship center over here, lives are transformed, and we believe your life will never, ever be the same again. Since we are all about Jesus, I'm just here to tell you a bit about what Jesus has been doing in our lives as a church. And we've got one particular individual that sums up all our praise, all our praise report, all our testimonies, and her name is Rebecca. Our sister Rebecca says, I am filled with so much joy and belief as I type my testimony out. 
For four years and nine months, I've been battling kidney disease. The doctors diagnosed me with stage five kidney failure. And ever since, my life came to a standstill. My medical, uh, my medical school education, my life plan, social life, everything brought to a standstill. The enemy has succeeded in taking away my joy at that particular time. To be honest, it took the grace of God to even keep my faith. We know that we can, we can, we can, we can, we can sense that. She goes on to say that I had to do dialysis three times every week just to keep living. Life became hard and unbearable. People who, who wanted to help me by donating a kidney asked me for our trade your sums of money. I lost every hope because even some of the people that wanted, to take, that wanted to help me wanted to take advantage of my situation for their own gain. But glory to God. My faith was rekindled when I joined Empowerment Worship Center last year. Can you help me celebrate Jesus for our church, Empowerment Worship Center? I told you at the beginning, over here, lives are transformed, and we believe your life will not be the same again. If you believe that, you want to clap to Jesus one more time right now. Our sister continued to say that my hope was renewed, and I kept praying for God. For us. I kept praying to God for a way out. Glory to God. Yes, indeed, he made a way where there seems to be no way. Last year, November, a close friend of mine who actually invited me to this church also invited me to an acquaintance of his. And through conversation, they got to know about my situation. The person in question decided to donate her kidney without taking any money. I just knew that this is the doing of the Lord. Oh, you want to clap to Jesus right now. If you have an idea what stage five disease of kidney is, it's close to death. Amen. Amen. Our sister continued to say that we right away made plans to travel for the surgery. The night before, I felt I, 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 felt I came to see, the night before I left, I came to see Prof. And he prayed for me and told me not to be afraid and that the surgery would be successful. The word was very timely for me. It brought me a lot of comfort and hope. Glory to God. We traveled for the surgery and everything was smooth. No difficulty we faced. And every single person we met helped us mysteriously. Can you celebrate Jesus for our sister right now? She continued to say, I love the testimony. It's long, but it's very, very encouraging. She goes on to say that my donor and myself came out of the surgery strong, and we were, taking, we were even talking the next day. God indeed came through for me in an amazing way, and I've come here to give him thanks. You want to clap to Jesus for our sister Rebecca right now? Our sister Rebecca was, as a matter of fact, was in service all morning to thank Jesus. She's healed, she's well, and she's here to say thank you, Jesus. Would you help us thank Jesus for Rebecca one more time? She finishes by saying, I want to thank our global lead pastor, Pastor Gideon Danso, for such an incredible vision of empowerment, worship center, where I get to call my home. And I also want to say thank you to my community pastor, Pastor Howard, for his relentless care and love. Glory to God. Turn to your neighbor and say glory to God. Oh, one more time, say glory to God. And while she's saying that, let's celebrate Jesus one more time. It's praise report. And whenever we come here, we are just here to praise the name of Jesus. And of course, we do know that you have some prayer requests. At this particular time in the service, I want you to lift up your hand right now and begin to speak to Jesus. Begin to let him know what you need from him. If your backs are against the wall like our sister Rebecca, Jesus will come through for you. Is it health? Is it relationship? Is it money? Is it career? Is it family? Is it ministry? Whatever it is, speak to him right now. The king is in the service. Whilst Fort of Life was ministering, the king came down right here in the service and is right closer to you than you even know and is listening to your prayers right now. Whisper to him what you need from him. Is it finance? Is it your relationship? Is it money? Is it, is it marriage? Is it children? Is it your ministry? Is it the work of your hands? Is it your family? Whatever it is, whisper to him right now. He will do it for you. Whilst we pray for each other, we pray for ourselves. I want us to pray for our global lead pastor. Please stretch forth your hand towards his seat right here in the front. 
and begin to whisper, begin to pray for him, begin to strengthen him, begin to harden him, begin to pray and prophesy upon the prophet right now, that a great grace will be upon his life right now, that he will shift to a different dimension, that even the anointing upon his life will be anew every morning, every period in the name of Jesus. Come on somebody, open your mouth, the prophet of God is watching us. Even if you're online, stretch forth your hand towards the screen and begin to pray for the prophet of God. Great grace be released in the name of Jesus. Great anointing as well. Whilst we finish the prayer, I want us to pray for the man of God that's bringing the word, that the Lord will give him strength, that the Lord will give him utterance, that the Lord will speak through him to the church that will never leave here the same in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray we love you. We thank you for such an incredible morning, afternoon, and evening where we get to do four incredible services. Services filled with signs and wonders. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for the life of our sister Rebecca, for coming through for her from on a, on a, on a deathbed, on a bed to die. But now she lives, and she lives among your people as a saint, even in our church, Empowerment Worship Center. All we are here to do tonight is say thank you, Jesus. Father, we lift up our prayers before you. Father, you are a prayer answering God. Let every prayer that we've worded according to your will be fulfilled, be answered in the name of Jesus. We lift up our global lead pastor before you. Father, let your mercy and your grace abound unto him. Your word says your mercies are anew every morning. Let his anointing, let the grace upon his life be anew this very minute and every period, every morning, every single time in the name of Jesus. Father, we further lift up the preacher before you, Pastor Joseph. Father, show him grace and mercy. Let him speak with that trans. Let him speak of power that will know your word and listen to your word. Our lives will never, ever be the same again. We love you, Jesus. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. And the church say amen. Church, would you clap with me right now as we praise Jesus, somebody? Come on, let's sustain the clap and give Jesus all the praise and all the honor in this place. You may resume to your seats in the presence of God. In the spirit of honor, we'd love to celebrate our GLP, right. our pastor, our leader, our mentor, the one and the only Pastor Gideon Dance. Come on, let's celebrate the man of God in this house. Of course, we want to celebrate all our senior pastors who are constantly being a blessing to us in this place. You want to celebrate yourselves. You made it to church on a Sunday night. You could have been anywhere else, but here you are with us worshiping. Of course, if you're watching us online, hey, you are not left out of the service. Thank you so much for connect connecting online. We do hope you have an amazing service. We're here to tell you a little bit about our church. My name is Carlos, and I'm here with... I'm Pastor Howard, and here in Empowerment, as our name suggests, we are a house of empowerment. And for that, we have services lined up to nourish you and empower you as you journey with God here in this. So we start on Sundays with four amazing family services. The first is at 7 a.m., second at 9 a.m., the third, 11 a.m., and the fourth is in the evening at 6 p.m. as we are here gathered. Sundays are special here in the prayer factory of empowerment. And you don't want to miss out. On Sundays also, after the service year, we meet outside for quick five. Quick five are those five short minutes spent with our circle members and our community in our circles for bonding, for connection, for prayer, for catch up. You don't want to miss out. It's always a good time to spend in the circles for quick five. And you surely be blessed. After Sunday, we come back here, but more so online. Online is Take Charge every Monday, 2 to Friday. Take Charge, 6 a.m. Instagram is Gideon Danso with an underscore. Facebook is Gideon Danso. And on YouTube, it's Empowerment Worship Center. It's just one hour, but guess what? It's filled with multiple testimony signs and wonders, and you don't want to miss out. We are back here on Tuesday. Empowerment, we are a family church that believes in community. And so on Tuesdays, we have a special service set up just for godly conversations, connections, care, growth, and accountability. And we call it Community Circles. We gather here in our communities of hope, of grace, of favor, of love, and the best one of faith community to have a good time. And this Tuesday, we are here. We start with opening worship and praise. Before that, we have happy hour. We play games. I mean, there's table tennis, the snooker, the, I mean, lots of games just to build you up, get you ready before we start the conversation. We pray for ourselves. Have a good time. It's always a blessing to join us for Community Circles. And I invite you especially to join us this Tuesday and you surely and truly be blessed. After that, we are back here on Wednesday for lunch hour experience. It happens every Wednesday, 11.30 a.m. through to 1.30 p.m. You are surely going to be blessed. We are a praying house. We don't stop praying because God doesn't stop answering. So even on Wednesdays at lunchtime, we skip our lunch in the restaurant and come here in God's house to come and have lunch with God and it's always filled with testimonies. Our senior pastor, Pastor Samuel Darko, is always on fire to bring you God's word through the prophetic, through praise and 
and even the word of God. You don't want to miss. We have dubbed it the hour of emergency. And this year of godly favor, you want to join us here for lunch hour and you surely and truly be blessed. Our week never ends without power night. Power night, as the name suggests, is that night of power, prophetic, of preaching of God's word, of praise and of prayer. Last week, Friday, if you were here, I don't have to tell you, no, it was amazing, it was powerful, and it doesn't ever get any less than that. This Friday, we are back here. After a long week of work, you want to come back here for power night to rejuvenate you, stir you up for the week ahead of you. And so I invite you once again for power night and you surely and truly be empowered. Put your hands together. Let's thank God for the multiple services we have in this house to build us up and encourage us. God bless you. Absolutely. Of course, Empowerment Worship Center is a church that loves to give, as our GLP always says, because we know that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. For paper crew, cash crew, we have got you covered, gently placed on your seats, our white envelopes for your tithes and your offerings. Through the course of the service, there will be a call where we can bring our tithes, our offerings, our first fruits to the altar, and of course, drop our offerings in the baskets that will be brought around by the team. If you are like Pastor Howard here, you have gone cashless, we have got all these remittance platforms to make giving feasible for you as well. We've got our mobile money number, is 055 100002. We've got our second mobile money number, we've got our short code, it's star three six five star one one six hash. We've got Monzo, all all the inter international remittance platforms. Wave Unity Link. We've got Monzo. If you want to send a check to us, it goes to Empowerment Worship Center. And please note that the center ends with an R E. Come on, put your hands together for yourselves for constantly pouring into this house with your substance. That's right. The giving house is truly a blessed house, and the blessed house is a big house. In empowerment, we are a big house, one big house with multiple rooms for all members of your house. So we start with the young ones. We have a well set in place case church for them. Teachers trained by our lead pastor, the man of God, to prepare your kids as they grow in God's way. So every Sunday, they are here for the first three services. Have a good time. Even on Tuesdays, the case church is open. Last Tuesday, they had their own pizza and worship night. And you come and see young ones praising Jesus like never before. You don't want to let your children and your kids miss out on this. So bring them here in God's house and they will grow in God's Way. And when they grow from kids, they will truly become teenagers. We won't abandon them because we have the very best here in this house, the fixed things church. And every Sunday, we have our fixed service. Are you putting your hands together for Jesus? Our fixed church is always on fire. They're always alive. And our Father has given them a specially made auditorium for their worship. Every Sunday, they come here at 9 a.m. for their service with their own pastor. And it's a good time. You don't want to leave your teenagers from experiencing Jesus because the only way they can be fixed is by Jesus. And we have the fixed things here to fix them the best way. And they will truly grow from there in wisdom and in stature to become young adults. And we have the ever amazing 412 Young Adults Ministry. When I say 412, what do you say? That's right. We beat the standard every day, but more so particularly on Wednesdays at our Connect service. Last week was a good time with the sip and paint, painting our visions for the year. This Wednesday, we are meeting again. It even gets deeper. You don't want to miss out. If you're a young adult without working or schooling, married or single, 412 service is your service, and I invite you to join us here. Our father says that I mean, age is only a number, and so it doesn't matter your age. Join us to 412, and you will surely be blessed and be encouraged. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus one more time for all these amazing services in this house. Brace yourselves, because there is a word about to come from the man of God that will encourage you and shift the paradigm. But before then, let's welcome and celebrate the sound of the house, 412 Life, for a time of worship. Thank you. And then he 
Holy Spirit comes around. He just brings me back to life. You would do it again. You would do it again.
is good and God is faithful. I need you to go to 10 people and tell them God is good. God is really, really good. Go to 10 people and tell them God is good. Don't wait for somebody to come to you. to lift up your right hand wherever you are. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand. I want us to worship for the next minute or two. Just a minute or two. I just sense in my spirit that we need to worship for the next minute or two. And I am blessed before you. And I am lost without you. Yes, I know it. You don't have to tell me. And I am blessed before you. Jesus, yeah. 
said put your hands together for Jesus put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord until you get it right we're not gonna get out of this space put your hands together for Jesus the King of Kings yeah. the Lord of Lords you want to add your shout you want to make some noise God is good and God is faithful amen 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 God is good and whilst we're at it to honor and celebrate my father, our global lead pastor, the prophet of God. Come on, put your hands together. Let's celebrate God for the life of the chief shepherd of this house. We love you, sir. We honor you. We celebrate you. And we are praying and trusting God that God will bring you to us soon because we miss you. Amen. Come on, put your hands together one more time. Let's celebrate the man of God. Amen. We celebrate, we honor all our pastors here this evening. We honor, we celebrate all our online viewers and you especially. Come on, put your hands together. And I want you to look at three people. Look at three people and tell them it's good to see you tonight. 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 Amen. Amen. If you don't mind, um, come with me to Judges chapter number 16. Uh, beginning from 15 to 22, Judges 16, we start from 15, um, if you don't mind, um, if you don't mind, kindly stand for the reading and the reverence of God's word, that is the culture of this house, unless you cannot, uh, you're not physically able, but if you're physically able, I will kindly ask that we all stand to reverence the reading of God's word. Judges 16, starting from verse 15, the Bible says, Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, and have not told me where your great strength lies. And it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death, that he told her all his heart and said to her, no razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Verse 18. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the laws of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all his heart. So the laws of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hand. Then she lured him to sleep 
on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him and his strength left him. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. The Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fitters and he became a grinder in the prison. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. I need you to look at the person standing next to you and tell them your hair will grow again. If I look at five people, look at five people and tell them your hair will grow again. Or I need you to look at five people, tell them your hair will grow again. The most interesting thing that I find at first service, second service, third service, and this service, nobody was looking at my direction because nobody believes that my hair will grow again. But we serve a God of miracles. And I believe that my hair will grow again. Come on, put your hands together and say to somebody, your hair will grow again. You may be seated in heavenly places. God is ever faithful. God is ever faithful. I want to speak to you briefly uh, on a sermon that we've entitled, What is your Delilah? What is your Delilah? A lot of times when we talk about Delilah, people are quick to identify who a Delilah is. People are quick to identify who they presume or assume a Delilah is. But the most important thing is for you to ask yourself, what is my Delilah? Because all of us here, sitting here, there's something that is seducing us. There's something that wants to bring us. There's something that wants to take us from the presence of God. There's something that wants to set us up so that we lose the strength, the purpose that God has called us in for. And when you have or when you get to identify that, then you wouldn't have to worry about who a Delilah is. Because when you know what your Delilah is and you work on it under the cross of Calvary, then you don't have a problem trying to identify who a Delilah is. I, I, I was telling the first service, the, the, the morning services that about 14 years ago when I met my spiritual father in the faith, Prophet Gideon done so. Uh, when I met him about 14 years ago, and, 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 and as I started serving in this ministry and started serving him, uh, two years into that, I had a situation where uh, a renowned man in this country confronted me and proposed or gave me an offer that at the time was very seducing and very enticing. At the time, it was very good, and it was supposedly going to change the trajectory of my life at the time, and it was going to, uh, uh, it was going to change, or it was, or was going to um, 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 elevate the calling of God upon my life. Uh, he, he came to me and said to me, he likes the way I serve, he likes the way I think, he likes the way I do my stuff, and that he wants to do A, B, C, and D, and E. And here I was, two years into my service as a man of God, walking in the call of the Lord, and I'm confronted with such a situation, and I've, I've got to make a decision whether... Uh, to, 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 to take this seducing and enticing proposal or offer that's been laid to me. Or trust God and walk in faith, service, and purpose and stick with my, with my, with my, with my spiritual father. But to cut the long story short, uh, without duress, fear or favor, I decided to stay. And thank God that I stayed because I think I made the right decision. But that's not why I'm here today and that's not the moral of the story. The moral of the story is that about two years after that, two years um, after this incident happened, uh, I was having a conversation with him and this subject matter came up again. And when the subject matter came up, we were talking about it at the time, it was about two years past and uh, we were talking about it and he said something that was very profound to me. He said something that has been one of the guiding principles in my walk with God, one of the pillars uh, for me as a man of God and as a servant of God. He said to me, I, I, was sitting, I remember where we were sitting and, and he said to me, he said, Stein. And, 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 and I said, yes, sir. And he said something, and I want you to hear this. He said to me, anything that seduces you out of your purpose will eventually betray you. Anything that seduces you out of your purpose 
will eventually betray you. And he said, that is the spirit of Delilah. That is the spirit of Delilah. Delilah is not necessarily a man or a woman. D Delilah is not gender-based. Delilah is simply anything that seduces you in order to betray you. Anything that seduces you in order to betray you is a Delilah. And this morning I came here, I came by, and I want to look straight into your eyes. I want to look at you while I know some of you are distracted and you're on the phone and all of that. But look at me for a minute, and you can go back to your phone if, if, if that's cool. Look at me for a minute. I want to ask you a very important question. What is your Delilah? What is your Delilah? Now look at the person sitting behind you and ask them, what is your delight? The person sitting behind you and ask them, if, if there's no one sitting behind you, uh, you need to you talk to the one that is in front of you. What is your Delilah? What is your Delilah? Uh, anyone that has spent any considerable amount of time studying the Bible will realize that right from Genesis to Revelation, any Bible story that ended up with a betrayer first started with a seduction. Any Bible story that ended with a betrayal, first started with a seduction. So when we look at the case of Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, before they betrayed God, it started with a seduction. A seduction of unwarranted knowledge that God has warned them about. And, and the enemy was able to seduce them out of their place of worship, was able to seduce them out of their place of strength, and was able to seduce them out of the place of their abode. When you look at the situation between David and Saul, David had just killed Saul's enemy, Goliath. Goliath was Saul's enemy, wasn't David's enemy. But Saul eventually uh, was seduced by jealousy and eventually had to betray the relationship between him and, and, and David. When we look at the case of Judas and Jesus, Judas was seduced by money. And because of money, Judas betrayed Jesus, when we look at Ahithophel and David, Ahithophel was seduced by the leer of vengeance and he had to betray his king. And so we read about something in the book of Judges chapter 13 throughout to 16 and when you go home and you want to read about the Judges, uh, you want to read about Judges 13 throughout the 16, you realize that Samson was the last judge of Israel. You realize that Samson was from the tribe of Dan. And Samson's father is Manoah. His mother's name was not mentioned in the Bible, but the Bible uh, identifies or the Bible uh, 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 describes the mother as, as a barren woman. Then in due time, God decides to bless them with a child. And like many other barren women in the Bible, the prophecy of her pregnancy is announced by an angelic visitation. An angel appears to Manoah and, and his wife, first to Manoah, then the wife, and said, you shall be pregnant. And when the angel shows up, he gives her some restrictions about what she can and cannot do, what she can and cannot eat what she can and cannot drink. And the reason why the angel restricts her movement is because God has declared that the child she will have will be a Nazarite. Let the church say Nazarite. I can't hear you. Come up, come up with me, come up with me. Say Nazarite. Nazarite is literally, uh, in Hebrew, Nazarite is literally anything that is set apart. Anything that is consecrated. Something that God says has a special purpose for him. So God says this child will be a Nazarite. If you go home and you want to read about who a Nazarite is, or if you want to read more about Nazarite, uh, you need to go to Numbers chapter 6. And you will find out that any man that God deemed a Nazarite has some restrictions in your life. Any man that God deemed a Nazarite has some restrictions in your life. Three in particular. He could not touch a dead body. He couldn't drink anything with, that contained alcohol and could never have their hair cut. He could not touch a dead body. He could not drink anything that contained alcohol. I want you to look at the person sitting next to you and ask him, are you a Nazarite? Are you a Nazarite? If you know somebody who take, every now and then takes a shot, ask them, are you a Nazarite? Are you, a, you know, you know the Nazarite. You know, you know a Nazarite. And so Manoah's son is born and his name is Samson. And Samson is deemed a Nazarite. And the reason why God consecrated 
Samson is because God has a purpose for Samson. Samson is to become the military leader of the army of Israel uh, 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 to fight against the dreaded enemies called the Philistines. And, and in preparation for this divine assignment, God has gifted Samson with unprecedented physical strength. No man can defeat Simon. Uh, Samson. And, and, and those of you who've been to Sunday school, and those of you who've been to church, uh, or, or, or you, 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 at least you went to Sunday school, your Sunday school teacher told you that Samson is the strongest man in the Bible. Samson is the strongest man in the Bible. No man could defeat Samson. Samson was so strong that Samson killed a lion with his bare hands. Samson was so strong that he used the jawbone of a donkey to kill a thousand people. There's nowhere in the Bible that there is a record of anybody who ever done that. Put your hands together for Samson. Samson is a strong man. But in spite of all his great physical strength, Samson surprisingly never lives up to the full call of God upon his life. Why? Because in spite of his great physical strength, Samson is hindered by some real life desires that seduces him. Those desires are fully exposed <laughs> with Samson's relationship with a sister called Delilah. And Delilah is one of those names you don't give to your child. Anybody that has been in church for a long time, uh, there are three names that you don't name your child. Delilah, Jezebel, or your son Judas. Anybody in this auditorium called Jezebel, or you know someone called Jezebel, you know anybody like that? Anybody here called Delilah, or you, have, you, know, some, you know a brother called Judas? Anybody knows a brother called Judas? I bet you if you name your son Judas, he will not have friends. Your son will not have, don't name them Judas. Amen. Now, now, the Philistines know that they cannot kill Samson. The Philistines know that Samson is the strongest man. They know that they cannot kill Samson. So, so they devised a strategy. They look out for, 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 for the weakness of Samson. They look out for, for what they can use outside of a man to get Samson. And the Philistines know that Samson, in spite of his strength, has got a thing or two for Philistine women. And so the Philistine laws came to see a sister called Delilah. They came up to Delilah and, and, and they said, look, D, we have 1,100 pieces of silver for you. If you will set up Samson, it is all yours. And due to the economic uh, harshness of the time, and Delilah needs to pay her bills, she agrees to take the money and set up the brother Samson. The Bible says that Delilah goes to Samson three times. And three times asks Samson, where lies your strength? Three times goes to Samson wanting to find out the source of the strength of Samson. And as the Bible narrates the story, three times Samson lies to her. Three times Samson lies to her. So, so Delilah is seeing that Samson is trying to toy with, 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 with her. And Samson doesn't want to come clean and come correct with the real source of his strength. And so Delilah decided to flip the script. Delilah decided to change the narrative. So Delilah goes to the brother Samson one day and began to cry. He began to cry and began to cry and began to cry and started saying all sorts of things. Oh, Samson, you don't love me. Say, Samson, you don't love me. Because if you love me, and let me just say this to you, brothers. If your woman begins to tell you or starts a statement by saying you don't love me, if your woman comes up to you and says that you don't love me, you know that you're about to lose something. You know that you're about to give up on something. Because the moment that statement comes in, you know that you are in for a treat. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you love me, you wouldn't lie to me like that. So Samson, Samson, and, 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 and I can imagine Delilah crying with tears flowing down her cheeks. And, and, and Samson is the kind of brother who can't deal with tears. Samson, the Bible says that she pers persuaded her until her soul was vexed to death. And, and Samson can't deal with tears. So, so, so Samson is looking at Delilah crying and her soul is vexed to death. 
Because Samson loves Delilah. And Delilah is trying to use that channel of tears to get information from Samson. So eventually Samson gives in and tells Delilah that my strength lies in my hair. Says that, says that if you shave my hair, I will lose my strength. And, and let me tell you how bad Delilah is. When Delilah found out that the strength of, De, of, of, of Samson is in her hair, the Bible said the first thing that she does is she puts him to sleep. She puts Samson to sleep on her lap. She, she puts Samson to sleep on her knees. Other rendition says she puts him to sleep on her thighs. And, and whatever that Delilah did to Samson to put him to bed was so good that Samson did not see or did not hear that his hair was being cut. The brother slept through a haircut uh, because I, 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 I believe that where Delilah put the head of Samson was very comfortable. And sometimes the enemy can put you in a place of comfort. The enemy can lure you into a place of comfort just to take away your strength. Sometimes the enemy can bring you to a place of comfort just to take you out of your purpose. Sometimes the enemy can bring you to a place of comfort just to see the secret place of your strength. So the Bible says that Samson sleeps. And when Samson sleeps, Delilah calls a man, another man, to cut the hair of Samson. And, and, and the Bible says that he wakes up and when Samson wakes up, Samson said to himself, I'm going to go out there, free myself and kill these guys. Samson thought it was another day in the office. But the Bible says that he did not know that the Lord was not with him. Now church, I want you to hear the depth of that statement. I want you to hear the depth of that phrase. He did not know that the Lord was not with him. Now that phrase brings to me, or it gives me a frightening reality and a horrible tragedy. A frightening reality that you can be seduced into a place and wake up one day and realize that the Lord is not with you. And not because the Lord left you, but because you decided to walk away from the presence of God. And let me tell you this, anytime the enemy seduces you or seduces you from, your, from, from, from the presence of God, he takes away your strength. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Where is that joy of the Lord found? The joy of the Lord is found in the presence of God. Because according to Psalm 16 verse 11, the Bible says in his presence there's fullness of joy. And the enemy knows that in the presence of God there's fullness of joy. And what the enemy does or tries to do is to lure you out of the presence of God. How I pray for you tonight. I pray for you that nothing will take you away from the presence of God. I pray for you that no matter the temptation, no matter what the enemy is throwing at you, no matter the bombardment, no matter what people are saying, no matter no matter your, your financial situation, no matter your relationship status, how I pray for you that nothing will take you out of the presence of God. And if you're in agreement, put your hands together and say, Jesus is Lord. You can wake up to the frightening reality that the Lord is not with you. It is sad for the Lord not to be with you, but it is tragic for you not to know. It is sad to realize that the Lord is not with you, but it is sad for the Lord to not be with you, but it is very tragic not to know. He did not know that God was not with him. Now, the question that you ought to be asking yourself right now is that how can Samson be seduced from the presence of the Lord and he did not know? What happened to Samson? What went wrong? Where did he get it wrong? And I want to share a couple of things with you, some weaknesses of Samson that I believe will help you and I as we journey along life and as we walk with God, that we may take some cues and lessons from the story of Samson. The first thing that happened to Samson or the first weakness of Samson was that Samson is set in his feelings and not the facts. Samson is set in his feelings and not the facts. In other words, Samson is in his feelings. 
Samson is in his feelings. And when you are in your feelings without some facts and truth, you will always make bad decisions. Watch, watch, watch how this goes down. Samson lies to Delilah three times according to the Bible. And any time he lies to her, she does to him what he lied about. And when he wakes up, he knows who did it. He knows that Delilah did it because she called the Philistines to come and get him. What I'm trying to say to you is that Samson knew that Delilah was up to no good. Samson was very aware that Delilah was no good. Samson knew that she wants to set him up. Samson knew that she wants to take his strength. Samson knew that Delilah was no good. Now, if, if, if he knew or if something knows that Delilah isn't any good, why then will he tell her the source of his strength? You want to know why? Because Delilah flipped the script. Delilah changed the strategy. Delilah changed the strategy of the battle. And she said, if you love me, if you love me, that's a very powerful statement right there, if you love me. You've never been in a situation where you have to prove your love. If you love me. And when you, I pray you never get there, but if you get there and you are asked that question, if you love me, you better be ready. You, you better be ready. If you love me, you don't love me. You don't care about me. You don't care for me. You claim you love me, but you are doing this to me. If you love me. She made something get in touch with his feelings. Delilah made something get in touch with his feelings. And in his feelings of love, he ignores the fact that he knows she's no good. <laughs> now hear me. You know, sometimes the biggest lie that would damage you is not the lie that other people tell you. The biggest lie that would damage you is the lie that you tell yourself. The facts that you ignore. The, the, the things that you know are not good for you, but you ignore. Now, 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 now hear this. Uh, 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 the Bible says, the Bible says, Delilah comes to Samson and begins to stir up Samson's feelings. Now watch this, having feelings, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with having feelings. Having feelings makes you human. Having feelings makes you human. But when you allow the feelings to override the fact and the truth of God's purpose for your life, that's when you become weak. I need you to look at your neighbor and ask them. I need you to look at, no, no, don't clap. Wait, wait, we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. I need to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, look at your neighbor, eyeball to eyeball, eyeball to eyeball. Look at some, find somebody and look at them, eyeball to eyeball, and ask them, what is your Delilah? Demand an answer from them. Demand an answer from them. And if they're lying, you will know they're lying. Demand an answer. What is your Delilah? What is your Delilah? You, your feelings can be strong. Your feelings can be powerful, your feelings can be deep, but your feelings are not always true. Feelings can be misleading. Feelings can change. And I've read my Bible several times and I found out, child of God, that there's nowhere in the Bible that God spoke to anybody through their feelings. There's nowhere in the Bible that God spoke to anybody through their feelings. God speaks to people. Uh, God, 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 God never reveals his will through emotions. God speaks through his word. God speaks through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. God speaks through wise counsel. God speaks through angelic visitation. God speaks in dreams. God speaks through the prophetic. God speaks through signs and wonders. God speaks through worship. God speaks through his men and there's nowhere in the Bible that God speaks to people through their feelings. You know why? Because your emotions cannot be trusted. Your emotions cannot be trusted. Your emotions can change. Your feelings can change. 
I know some of you sitting in your rows and you've got, you've got people sitting next to you. And, and since you came to church, since 7 a.m., oh, sorry, 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. that you came here, you've changed your feelings towards the person sitting next to you about three times. When you first came, you liked them, you greeted them. Then as the service goes on, you realize that, mm -mm, I don't really like them. And then you realize that touch your neighbor is getting too much and you don't want them to touch you. You've changed your feelings towards the person sitting next to you a few times. Feelings are not stable. Feelings can change. I need you to ask somebody, how do you feel towards me? No, 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 no. Ask them. Look at them and ask them, how do you? Now, I say, look at them. It's an assignment. Look at somebody and ask them, how do you feel towards me? How do you feel towards me? Now, that's not a line that you want to use because you wanted to speak to the person already and I'm giving you approval. No, I'm not doing that. Tell somebody he's not doing that. God does not speak through emotion. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 5, Proverbs chapter 3, 5 and 6, Proverbs chapter 3, 5 and 6, Proverbs chapter 3, 5 and 6, the Bible says, trust in the law with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own emotions. And in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Give me the, give me the uh, message version. Give me the message version. The same scripture, message version. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Your feelings will lead you to try and figure things out on your own. But God will direct your path. But the spirit of God will always direct your path. And I came here this evening to tell somebody talk to somebody prophesy over your life that anything that is drawing you pulling you anything that is pushing you to figure it out on your own you better live it on the cross you better live it to God you better live it to Jesus and let nothing pull you out from the presence of the Lord put your hands together for Jesus anytime you are overwhelmed Anytime your emotions are running high, anytime that things are bothering you, let me tell you this, don't take any decisions. Don't take decisions in the middle of your feelings. Don't take any meaningful decision in the middle of your feelings because feelings are temporal. How you feel at the time that you want to take the decision may change the next five minutes, the next 10 minutes, the next 20 minutes. So anytime you are overwhelmed with feelings, you are overwhelmed with anger, you are overwhelmed with emotions, you are overwhelmed with hurt, you, you need to make sure that you step back until that feelings neutralize. And if you still feel the same, then you can take a decision. Put your hands together for that life lesson. Because... One of the ways that the enemy seduces us from the will of God is through false feelings. When you feel like you are in love, that feeling of being in love can easily draw you from the will of God. Matter of fact, let me do a quick survey here right now. I want to ask you, I, I want to do a quick survey. I did it in the morning services. Are there any grown folks in the house? I see grown folks, but I'm talking about people. You, you, you pay your own bills. You work. You, you're responsible. Uh, you pay for your own Uber. Come on, lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. I want grown folks here. Grown folks. Grown folks here. Grown folks here will not confess to this, but I can tell you that majority of the people here, you've done some silly mistakes. You've made some silly decisions because you thought you were in love. Correct? You, you, you've made some silly mistakes because you thought you were in love. You, you made some silly mistake. You woke up 1 a.m., 1 a.m. in the morning, and you sat in your car, and you drove all the way, all over Accra, looking for your boyfriend because you thought your boyfriend was another girl, only to find out that your boyfriend was sleeping because you thought you were in love. You, you, you took some money from your mama and gave it to your girlfriend knowing that your girlfriend was not going to pay it back because you thought you were in love. <laughs> Do I have a witness in the house? Do I have a witness in the house? We all done some silly things in life because we thought we were in love. When you are in love, green becomes blue and blue becomes black. So everybody's telling you that this is black, but when you're in love, it looks white because love, bay says it's white. And when Bay says it's white, nobody else can convince you that it's black. 
I know I'm in your business. I know that. I know I'm touching, I'm touching on something. I know I'm in your business. The way you are quiet, I know that I'm in your business right now. <laughs> Amen? That the feeling of being in love can sometimes cause you to ignore the facts. So Samson is seduced because he's set in his feelings and not the facts and the truth. Now, not only is he set in his feelings that he ignores the facts, another reason why something was seduced from his place of strength is because Samson mistaken the symbol of his strength to be the source of his strength. Samson mistaking the symbol of his strength to be the source of his strength. And, 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 and when I got this revelation, it blew my mind. Watch this. Samson goes to Delilah. Samson tells Delilah that the source of his strength is in his hair. Watch this carefully. I want you to hear this. He tells Delilah in verse 17 that, 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 that his strength is in his hair. And when that hair is shaven, he will lose his strength. Now, the reason why we've accepted that is because we know that Samson is a Nazarite. And as, as, as a Nazarite, as we learned earlier in the sermon, there are three major restrictions on his life. He cannot touch a dead body. He can't take any alcohol. He can never have his hair cut. And, 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 and I hear this. So, 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 so the question is, how come when he touched a dead body in Judges chapter 14, the same Judges chapter 14, he doesn't lose his strength? How come that when he had alcohol at a wedding feast, he doesn't lose his strength? It is because we've been taught or we've been taught as humans by, 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 by the process of elimination that because he touched a dead body and did not lose his strength, because he had alcohol and did not lose his strength, and he had a haircut and lost his strength, then that means his strength is in the hair. <laughs> but that's wrong. That is wrong. That is, that is so, so wrong. And I know that your, your, your Sunday school teacher will be upset with me but that is wrong interpretation of the scripture. There's nowhere in the Bible that the Bible suggests that the strength of Samson was in his hair. There's nowhere in the Bible, there's nowhere in the book of Judges, there's nowhere in the Bible that, that the Bible suggests that. Uh, God did not say that. When the angel came to Manoah, the angel did not say that. When the angel came to Samson's mother, uh, the, 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 the angel did not say that. Uh, 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 it is our own interpretation of it by the reason of the process of elimination. Because as a matter of fact, there are three times in the Bible that Samson uses his strength that we know of or that is recorded. Two times in Judges chapter 14 and one time in Judges chapter 15. Two times in Judges chapter 14 and one time in Judges chapter 15. The first time he uses his strength to kill the lion in Judges chapter 14, verse number 6, the Bible says that, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Before he could kill the lion, the spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. The second time in chapter 14 that, that, that he used his strength is when he killed the 30 men of Ashkelon. And before the strength came in, in verse number 19, the Bible said, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. And the third time that he used his strength in chapter 15 is when he used the the, 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 the jawbone of a donkey to kill a thousand people but before he could do that the Bible says uh, that the spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily there's no way that the Bible suggests that and his hair grew there's no way the Bible suggests that, that and when his hair was bushy the strength of, it was the spirit of the Lord that came upon him may I suggest to you right now that the strength of Samson was not upon his hair but it was the relationship that he had with God. That any time that he needed God, God showed up in an unprecedented way. That any time that he needed God, God showed up in his life. Do not mistake the symbol of your blessing to be the source of your blessing. And some of you here under the sound of my voice, you may not have the name Samson, but you have a Samson syndrome. The reason why you cannot bless God, the reason why you struggle to pay tithe, the reason why when you come to church, you 
struggle to give, the reason why you struggle to serve, the reason why you think that you are above heels, the reason why you are still on your high heels is because you think that that job of yours, that that connection of yours, that the people that you know, because you come from the right family, you think that it is by your own strength, but when you know and you know and you know like I know that I have no business standing on this altar preaching the word of God but it is by the grace of God I will not put it to my eloquence, I will not put it to the way I preach, I will not put it to the Bible school I went I will not put it to my connection even with my father but I know it is by the grace of God because when I remember back in the days when I was but a youth when I was but young in Kumasi from Ashanti New Tower, whence God has brought me on the altar of the Lord, I can't help it but place, I can't help it but speak, I can't help it but say it, I can't help it but point to God that it is by the grace of God. My strength is in God, my strength is not in this microphone, my strength is not in my connection, my strength is not in my degrees, my strength is in God, my strength is in God. And if you believe your strength is in God, rise up to your feet. Give Jesus your loudest praise. My strength is in God. My strength is in God. My strength is in the Lord. My strength is in the Lord. My strength is in the Lord. In the Lord. Oh, I feel like preaching. My strength is in the Lord. My strength is in the Lord. No, no, no. I understand and I know how you feel right now. I know here at Empowerment Worship Center, I know everyone can preach. I know that because we sit under a teacher, a prophet, an apostle, evangelist, <laughs> all the fivefold ministries in the house. And so each and every one of you have got some word in you. And you can, you, 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 you can rightfully divide the word of truth. And, and so I know there's somebody here sitting in a congregation somewhere who is probably trying to distort my argument and saying, hold on, pastor. You, 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 you just said to us right now that, 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 that Samson's strength had nothing to do with his hair. That, that, that his strength was directly from God. Then how come his haircut triggers the loss of strength. Now, here it is. Don't lose me. Here it is. I want, I, want you hear, I want you to hear this carefully. The reason is this. Here it is. Because that's where Samson thought his strength lies. That's where Samson thought his strength lies. He mistaking the symbol of his strength, which is the head, to be the source of his strength, which is God. He thought this was his strength. And, 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 and watch this. Since he thought that the hair was the strength, the mistake that Samson made was that he put what he thought was his strength in a place where Delilah had access to. He, he put what he thought was his strength in a place where Delilah had access to. Now, you, you better be careful in finding your strength in what people have access to. Because if I know people the way I know people, man of God, when people know where your strength is, or when people think they can figure out where your strength is, what they want to do is they want to cut it. And that's exactly what Delilah did. She cut it. And, and, and I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight. I don't know who this message is for. But don't find your strength in your job. Because layoff is coming. Don't find your strength in your salary. Because recession can come. Don't find your strength in your connections. Because people change. Don't find your strength in your political affiliation. Because eight years is just around the corner. Don't, don't, don't find your strength in, 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 in your degrees. And it's good to acquire knowledge. But don't find your strength in it. Find your strength in your relationship with God. Because in your relationship with God, no one can cut you out. And, and, and I watch this before you clap. God is the only safe place 
God is the only lap. God is the only knees. God is the only thighs that when you lay your head upon, you wake up so strong. God is the only knees that when you lay your head upon, you wake up with your strength increased. But when you lay your head upon where men have access to, by the time you wake up, it is gone. Now look at the person sitting next to you one more time and ask them, what is your Delilah? Or ask somebody, what is your Delilah? What is your Delilah? What is your Delilah? What is your Delilah? I know God has blessed you. I know God has blessed you with wealth. I know God has blessed you with companies. And he's going to bless you with some more. I know God has blessed you. I know you are the CEO uh, in one of the biggest companies in town. I know you are uh, one of the greatest up-and-coming artists in this generation. I, I, I know you are one of the greatest guys in town. I know you own multiple businesses. I, I, I know you had one of the biggest consortiums in Africa. I, I know you have numerous avenues that brings you excessive revenues, but they are all symbols. They are all symbols to point to the source. They are all symbols that will point to the source. The Bible said when they shall see your works, they will glorify your father in heaven. God will bless you so that the blessing become a symbol that you can point to God. God will bless you so that the blessings, the work of your hands, your relationships, your family, uh, 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 your connection, they all become symbols that will point to God. Ask somebody, what's the source of your blessing? Ask somebody, what is the source of your blessing? 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 Never look at the blessing that God has given you and let your ego communicate to your mind that it is by your own strength. Because that's the mistake that sometimes we make. When God brings us to the place of abundance, when God brings us to the place of, 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 of wealth, or God brings us to the place of good life, we begin to think that it is because of somebody we know, it is because of, 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 of what we did, it is because we made the right moves, it is because we are smart, it is because we are intelligent. No, no, no. It is by the grace of God. It is by the grace of the living in God. There are people who are ten times smarter than you. There are people who are ten times beautiful than you. There are people who are ten times stronger than you. There are people who are ten times connected than you. But they are nowhere near where you are because grace is making it happen. I like how someone puts it. He said, grace is making it happen. Grace is making it happen. And if you believe that grace is making it happen, I want you to appreciate God. Lift your right hand in the air like that. Reach your, lift your right hand in the air like that. Add the left one and begin to slap it in the air and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, 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 now watch this. Now watch this. The reason why Samson was seduced out of the place of his strength, one, is because Samson was set in his feelings and not the facts. And, and not only was he set in his feelings and not the facts, but, but, but also Samson mistaking the, the, the symbol of his strength to be the source of his strength. And, and so he made mistakes thinking that his strength is in his hair, not acknowledging and not knowing that the strength, the real strength is from God. He didn't know where his real strength was from. And the last thing, the last thing that, 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 that made Delilah or gave her the upper hand to seduce Samson from the place of God. Now here it is, this is deep. Is that Samson's desire for Delilah was deeper than his devotion to God. Samson's desire for Delilah was stronger than his devotion to God. Samson's real problem, church, is idolatry. And I know some of you think that idolatry is simply you worshiping other gods. No, that is not idolatry. Idolatry is when you give anything or anyone more priority, attention, devotion, or resources of your life than you give to God. 
Say that one more time because that's going to help you. Idolatry is, is not just bowing to some, some, some graven images. Idolatry is when you give anything or anyone more commitment. When you give anything or anyone more priority, attention, devotion, resources of your life than you give to God. You know what that means? You know what that means? Your job could be an idol. When you prioritize your job over worship, you have an idol problem. Your fitness routine can be an idol. Some of you are committed to waking up 5 a.m. every morning to go to the gym, but you can't wake up early to pray. You have an idol problem. Social media. You wake up in the morning and the first thing that you reach out for with your eyes closed is your phone. You want to check who liked your picture. You want to check who sent you a DM. You want to check the response on the picture or the photo you put on your, on your status, your stories. But you can't even say thank you, Jesus, for waking me up this morning. You have an idol problem. You are committed to buying all the latest designer bags and designer shoes and designer clothes, designer kaftans, designer sandals, the latest permission. But when you come to church, you can't tithe. You have an idol problem. Anything that you place above your relationship with God is idolatry. And this is where I want you to look at a person sitting next to you. Hold your hand, squeeze it, and ask them, what is your Delilah? I'll give you permission. Hold your hand and squeeze it and ask them, what is your Delilah? What is your Delilah? What is your Delilah? The problem with Samson is that Samson puts Delilah before God. Samson puts Delilah before God. Samson puts much effort in pursuing Delilah than pursuing God. And so I finally find out, man of God, I find out why Samson could not discern that God was not with him. It's simply because he did not desire God. The, 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 the only conclusion that I came to is because Samson did not desire God. He desired Delilah. And, and many of you, there are some Delilahs in your life that you desire. And we all have our Delilahs. There are some things in your life that you desire more than God. You come to church and you lift up your hands and you begin to praise God only on Sundays for five minutes. And even that one... But there are some Delilahs in you. There are some things in you that you are so religiously committed to. Samson desired Delilah more than he desired God. You, you want to know the people that God reveals his most intimate will to? People that hunger after God. People that thirst after God. People that, 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 that wait on God. People that, 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 that pursue God. You, you, you want to know, show me a man that has a relationship with God. Show me a man that hears from God. It's a man that has a relationship with God. The Bible says that but without faith it is impossible to, to, to please God. But I like the B when it says that for he who comes to God must believe. Other versions say must know that he is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. When you seek God God with all your heart, you will find God. And tonight, I came here to encourage somebody. I came here to encourage somebody, let go of your Delilah. Tell somebody, let go of your Delilah. Let go of your Delilah. You need to hunger and thirst for God. You need to desire God. You need to seek after God. The Bible says that they that seek me early shall find me. How much of God do you desire? How much of God do you desire? 
The problem with some of us is that we are so full of Delilah that we don't desire God. We are so full of Delilah that we don't desire God. Now, here's what I want you to hear, and I don't want you to miss it. Here it is. I want you to hear this. How much of God you have in your life is directly set on how deeply you desire him. Say that one more time. How much of God you have in your life is directly set on how deeply you desire him. God says, you can have as much of me as you desire. God is saying, I'm not limiting you. You can have as much as you desire. God, God, God is saying that I'm so big, you can have as much as you can eat. God, God, God is saying, when you come to me, open your mouth wide and I'll fill it. So how, how wide you can open your mouth will determine how filled you will become. God is a big-breasted God. God wants you to be, to be filled. God wants you to have more. God wants you to be satisfied of him. God wants you to eat his word. And, and I was telling the first, second and third services, I was telling them a story. I was making an analogy to them. And I believe it's relevant to this message. Uh, uh, by the grace of God in this house, under the leadership of our global lead pastor, uh, I, I've, been, I've been mandated to lead the team that, that, that handles conferences in this house. Okay, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. And, and, and by God's grace, we do it. But one of the things that I look forward to during conference time, man of God, one of the things that I love about conferences is the lunch after the conference. And, 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 and in case you don't know, we have lunch after the conference. And, and conference is so hectic. And, 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 and some, of the, some of the team members are here, and some of you have worked with me over the years. It's very hectic. We start, there's pre-conference, during the conference, and post-conference. And, and so, 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 so when we have conference and we have our global lead pastor uh, have guests here after the conference when they, when, when, when they finish speaking, um, um, because it's, it's, it's culturally, culturally right, it's, it, you know, it, it, it's good that when you invite somebody to your house, you feed them. It's only right that you feed them. And, and so after the conference, when they finish speaking, sometimes, you know, uh, 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 we, we, go, we go for dinner or we go, we go for lunch. But the problem, I always look forward to these moments because... Most of the times, you will not have time to eat until after the conference. And, and, so, and, so, and, so, and, so, and so, I look forward to these moments. But the problem with that is this. The problem with these stuff, man of God, is that when we go out there to eat, and by the way, one of my favorite places that we go out to eat is Labadi Beach Restaurant. And those of you who have been to Labadi Beach Restaurant, you know that Labadi Beach Restaurant, their food is really good. It, it, the buffet is really, really, really good. And so I always look forward to going there with these men of God. And, 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 and when we go, uh, uh, you are Pro Prophet Gideon sitting here, Pastor Hannah, Pastor Matthew, uh, Pastor Keon, depending on you know, the, the conference that we're having, you have them sitting there. And the problem, man of God, is that I cannot or I'm not able to eat the way I want to eat. I'm not able to eat the way I want to eat because I have my global lead pastor sitting there. I have the guest speakers sitting uh, on the other side. And, 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 and I'm sitting there and, I, and the food is there, all right, but I cannot eat the way I want to eat because, you know, they are eating, but they are eating very diplomatically. They are eating, you know, with all the ethics of the table. Uh, and and they, 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 they're eating and talking at the same time. And, you know, when you're eating and you're talking at the same time, you cannot consume the food well. And, and when they're asking you a question, you have to answer the question. And the last thing that I want is after eating, or after, after we finish eating, somebody will say to me that, Joseph, you have a great appetite. You don't, you, you, don't, you don't want them to tell you that you have a great appetite because that's a glorified way of them telling you that you eat too much. And so to avoid all this scenario, I follow suit. I'm hungry, but I eat a little bit. I'm hungry, but I eat a little bit. One of my one of my guys some time ago said something. He said he said that he said that <laughs> he said something about uh, uh, front something about front gentility home cry. 
<laughs> so he made some comment like that. <laughs> Being gentle in front of people and going home to cry. That was the situation. I always leave unsatisfied. But what can I do? I can't do anything. So, 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 so this has been happening over the years. And so last year when Pastor Andy Thompson and his daughter came to town, lunch was organized one more time. And when we I went out to eat, I was so hungry, I made up my mind that this time around, I'm not going to sit near their table. I'm not going to sit around their table. Enough is enough. I'm going to eat. So what I did when we got to Labadi Beach Hotel, I delayed my entrance to the restaurant. I made sure that I had a phone call. And I stood there to listen and, and, and be on the phone until they, went, they all went in and found themselves a table. And when they found a table, man of God, I came in and I found my own little table in the corner. Because I wanted to eat. And, and, so, and so while they were sitting there, I found myself in a corner, a little table. And I realized that they could still see me. So what I did was that I made sure that my back was facing them. And I am, oh my God. I, I'm facing the wall and my back is against them. You know why? Because sometimes you need to be able to turn your back to the things that does not allow you to get more of God. Sometimes you need to be able to turn your back on things that are not allow you to be filled with God. And today I came here to encourage somebody. I don't know what it is that is pulling you, that is making you shy. I don't know what it is that is taking you away from being filled. But tonight if you can turn and face the wall if you can turn your back against it they cannot see you turn your back against your relationship turn your back to the relationship turn your back to your problems turn your back to, 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 to your financial issue and face the wall because when you face the wall God will speak and God was speaking to me through the fool mother God I found that that was the first time that I had the liberty to eat what I wanted to eat because sometimes you go there and you feel like having soup or a little bit of the local dish. But how do you have a local dish in front of Pastor Hannah who asks questions about everything that he sees? And I realized that I had the liberty to eat. And after eating, man of God, I went back for second round. I went back to get more. Because in God, there's more. In God, there's more. As long as you have space to eat, there's more. So I went and I took some more. Man of God, I came back and I sat down and I began to eat. Halfway through it, I realized that I was getting kind of full. And so what I did was that, no, I'm not going to let this go. I'm still facing, my back is still facing them. And then, man of God, as I was eating, I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to sit for like five minutes. Make sure that the food is able to place itself in my stomach. I'm going to make sure that the food is properly reserved so there's more room. And lo and behold, after five minutes, the food had properly gone inside so there was more room so I continued to eat. In the same way with God, when you can open up, when you can open your heart wide, when you can make room for Jesus, he will always fill you. He will always fill you. It depends on you. The limitation is not on God. The limitation is on how much you can carry. And I was ready to take as much as my body can. And you know what else I found out with the buffet? I found out that any time that I, I, I finish the plate, it doesn't matter whether I finished it or I didn't finish it. Because you can't go there. It's a buffet. You can't go there and, begin, and you eat and wipe the plate. No, that's not right. You, can't, so you, you have to leave a little something on it. You have to be a gentleman. You can't eat everything. But I found out, man of God, that when I finished eating the first course and I was going for more, I didn't have to take the old plate to go and get the new food. I didn't have to take the old plate. I just had to go to where the buffet is, get a new plate, and get a filled. I just had to go there, get a new plate, and get a feel. When you come to God, God wants you to come empty. God wants you to come to him 
empty. He wants you to come to him not full of yourself, not full of your problems, not full of the things that you've been through, not full of the things that you're going through. He wants you to come to him empty. And when you come to him empty, he will fill you. When you come to God empty, he will fill you. God has prepared the food. The buffet is laying right before you. And God is saying you can have as much of me as you want. And then when you go to a buffet, they, they've lined up the food. And the same way, when you come to the presence of God, he's lined up the blessing. You can have more of God as you want. You can have joy. You can have more power. You can have more joy. You can have more prosperity. You can have more, more, more spiritual uh, uh, strength. You, 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 you can have a good job. You can have a good relationship. God is saying that open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And as I bring my message to an end, I don't know which area in your life that you need God to fill. I don't know which area in your life that you're trusting God to fill. But God is the chief chef. And he has prepared the buffet before you. All you need is to bring your empty plate. All you need is to bring your plate so that you will be filled. And tonight, I want all of us to rise up to our feet. Wherever you are in this auditorium, and I want you to place your two hands on your heart. I want you to place your two hands on your heart. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and begin to have an intimate communion with your father. Begin to pray. For the next 60 seconds, please, while the song is going on, please begin to pray to God. That God. I need more of you. I need more of you. You know there's a place in your life where the enemy is trying to seduce you and take you out. But call unto the name of the Lord. The Bible says that they that, shall, they, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Fill my cup, Lord. Yes, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. All he's saying is that bring your cup. Come and bring your plate and you will fill it. This Thursday, begin to pray. My begin soul. to pray. Oh, bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up. before God. Bring your plates before God. It's never too big for God. No matter how big the plate is, he's going to fill it. Just open your heart. with Jesus. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, all this message is but but just poetry in your ears. But when you have a relationship with Jesus, when the foundation is Christ, the enemy can never seduce you from your place of authority. When you know Jesus, the enemy can never seduce you from the place of power. When you have Jesus, the enemy can never seduce you from your place of influence. And tonight, if you're here in this auditorium and you don't know Jesus, or you are connecting with us online and you don't know Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I invite you to come into my heart. Be the Lord, be the master and the savior of my life. 
I give in and I give up. I give my life to you, God. Father, help me to serve you. Help me to serve you. Help me to serve you. Forgive me of my sins and write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Let's thank God. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want us to prepare an offering unto God. If you need an envelope, kindly lift up your hand. And I will encourage you to give generously. Place nothing above your relationship with God. Place nothing above your relationship with God. And if your offering is ready, kindly lift it up. If your offering is ready, kindly lift it up. If your offering is ready, kindly lift it up. And those of you who are giving your offering um, via our digital platforms, the information are on the screen. Those of you connecting with us online, the information will be on the screen as well. You can kindly uh, give through our digital platform. God bless you. God bless you for giving. Can you lift up your offering? Lift it up. Lift it up. Can you lift up your offering? Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you praise. Thank you, God, for your mercies. Thank you for the opportunity to give. I pray, God, that you bless your people and increase them on every side. I pray that let this offering come upon you like a sweet fragrance, that the blessing will be in abundance. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Uh, kindly, kindly put your offering in the basket as the basket comes around. God bless you for giving. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill me up until I If you're here and you pay your tithe, kindly we have standing. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you praise for these ones and their obedience. We, 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 we devour the devourer for their sake and command increase. Open heavens in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your fill be filled with plenty in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Kindly walk up to the altar and, and, and place your, 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 your tithe at the altar. If you have any other pledge or uh, you made any other pledge as well, you can join them. God bless you richly. Fill me Worshiping with us for the first time. Anybody here? Any, oh, wow. Anybody here? Kindly be upstanding. You can do better than this empowerment. Put your hands together for them. Amen. Oh, wow, 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 wow. God bless you. God bless you, sirs. And if you're sitting next to them, you want to give them a handshake. You want to find out what their name is. Yep, yep, yep. Show them some love. Show them some love. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Um, this is Empowerment Worship Center. Uh, and our global lead pastor, Prophet Gideon Nelson, is not here. Back next week. I entreat you to come back. Um, this, this is just a John the Baptist word.
Sunday you hear the real word. So <laughs> I just want to encourage you to, to come back on Sunday. Um, but if you're here in this auditorium or if you're standing and you want to be a part of this church or you've been coming and coming and you say, I want to be a part of this church, you can lift up your hand. You can lift up your hand if you want to be a part of the church. Uh, if you made that decision, if you gave your life to Jesus or you want to be a part of the church, after church, kindly sit on my right-hand side here and our able discovery team will come and have a word with you. God bless you, sir. Father, we thank you for your sons. We pray in the name of Jesus that whatever reason why you brought them here today, meet them at the place of their need. Bless them always. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. You may kindly be seated. After church, kindly uh, sit on my right hand. Just a minute of your time we would like to connect with you. Amen. If you are uh, here in this church and you want to be baptized, uh, worship and baptism night 31st of March. Worship and and, and, and baptism night, 31st of March. You want to put your name down, you want to give your name to your circle leader or your community pastor or any of the pastors for that matter. And um, uh, we will make sure that you are baptized on the 31st of March. 27th March to the 1st of April is our Easter conference. I thought you put your hands together for Jesus. 27th March to the 1st of April is our Easter conference. And on the 1st of April, we'll have a picnic right here uh, uh, at the four uh, courts of the church, we have a picnic here. I know you don't come for community circle, but just come and eat. Just come and eat. Come and eat and drink. It's fine. It's okay. Just come and eat. Tell somebody, just come and eat. Just come and eat and drink. Amen. On the 1st of April, there'll be loads of food and drinks here, and we want to break bread uh, with you. Amen. Amen. All our weekly activities are coming on Tuesday, community circles. God is doing something amazing here. At Empowerment Worship Center Wednesday with Pastor Samuel, uh, lunch hour, the prayer, the prophetic, the praise, the word. God is, there's so many testimonies that is coming out of Wednesdays. Amen. And on Friday, uh, uh, power night with our, our father, our global lead pastor, uh, Prophet Gideon Danza. Power night. He's got a word for you. Uh, he's going to be here uh, by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Kindly be upstanding and come to the altar as we worship kindly come to the altar don't be shy don't be shy come to the altar let's worship for a minute before we leave here come to the altar come to the altar amen amen may his faith be upon you in the thousand generations, in your family, in your children, in your children. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to sing this song. In grant you testimonies that has never happened to you before. May you look back at the end of this month and say that March was my best year yet. May the Lord bless your family.
the work of your hands. I cancel all manner of accidents in the name of Jesus. And I decree that you are blessed. You, I cancel premature death in the name of Jesus. The Lord cover you. The Lord secure you. The Lord hide you in his blood. Be blessed. Be highly favored. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. The Lord bless you. Have a blessed week.